after 18 hours ride from Tirana. I am completely exhausted. The necktie was invented by the Croats. This is why it's called Kravata. If you're a Croat and have a job, you can be only 16 and vote. I guess this means that young people here start wearing ties early on. I lived here for about seven years or eight. How old are you? 26. 26. Yesterday we stopped two people to orientate us because we didn't know the street and they didn't seem so friendly. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't jump to conclusions immediately. <laughs> this is the building, the actual building of the Zagreb Solis as well. It belongs to them. We have three concerts in Moscow, St. Petersburg, and somewhere in Siberia. That's exciting. Yeah. And it's going to be very cold. Yeah. <laughs> when I came here, I was 16 and I didn't know the Croatian language at all. I, I didn't even, at one moment, I didn't feel any homesick or anything. You know, I got into Zagreb immediately. Oh, nice. <laughs> you feel like in a, you're living in a big city, like a metropole or something, but it's at the same time it has this small city atmosphere as well. You know. Is there any place here called Krivi Put? Yes. If you stayed in Zagreb a little bit longer, you would end up there after two o'clock. You know, if you get drunk. When I came to Croatia, I realized how far away from Kosovo is, how it's built, the way it functions, what it offers. It just got me thinking that we are so far away from becoming this. Civil society sector played a significant role in the country's EU membership process. We had to wake up really early uh, to go and meet with a gong. It took eight years of negotiations with EU, and finally, in 2011, they signed a treaty to become the bloc's 28th member. Corruption, intolerance of non-Croats, and the border dispute with Slovenia were the main obstacles. I cannot say that the Croatian government ever saw a need for any help for, from civil society. In our experience, it meant much more meetings and discussions with representatives from the European Union, while the government basically ignored us and still does. The European Union, um, as a structure, is open to civil society organizations, to various think tanks, to various advocacy networks, you know, people who have expertise and are independent-minded. From the level of European Union, we were able to, through this sort of uh, boomerang effect, still have some influence. When you look through a perspective of uh, Croatia-EU negotiations and how the whole process went, uh, I hope the, the other countries in the region get to learn a lot from how it went here. And especially civil society organizations um, try to use the methods and, and the model that civil society organizations use here. What we did is follow the benchmarks, how the European Union measures them, and we, a coalition of civil society organizations here in Croatia, decided to do our own benchmarking. So, uh, on that level, when you had the benchmark prevention of corruption, it was made out of two issues, freedom of information and prevention of conflict of interest. So, what we did is uh, make our own analysis how the system works, what should be changed within the legislation and the bodies that are supposed to implement the law. 
suggest that to, to the government, never minding if they care or not, but also to suggest it to various European Union representatives. Our government got to read our suggestions and recommendations, perhaps not always as uh, our own, but also as European Unions. Okay, okay. The high-quality roads seem to relax the loud machine of our van. 